All right, it looks like we are live. I'm going to share this link to this live video over on our Michigan 4 H Horse Program Facebook page so that people know they can watch. And then I will jump right into our lecture. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully now you can see a PowerPoint. Um, and we are gonna have about a 30 minute uh, lunch and learn lecture. I know it's a little bit later than lunch, but this is actually an encore version of the lunch um, lecture that we did. Uh, we just had some trouble recording it. So I'm going to redo it for everyone here if you'd like to watch. Um, and you can rewatch later as it will be housed on the extensionhorses.org YouTube channel where it is being streamed live from right now as well. All right, so if you'd like to follow along on the fun, you can join Michigan 4-H Horse Program Facebook page. This is what the homepage of that looks like. I'd also suggest that you go like extensionhorses.org's Facebook page, which I will have a little bit of information about at the end of this lecture, um, that you can join that and follow along for lots of uh, free online equine information. Um, if you are interested in learning more about some 4-H information and how you can join, as far as Michigan goes, here is the URL that you'll need to go to, cnar.msu.edu slash 4-H. If you would like to um, learn more about our newsletters, signing up for 4-H, um, asking an expert, shopping at the 4-H mall, um, that's where you need to go. It's a very user-friendly website that you can visit. Now, if you um, happen to have joined Monday's uh, lunch and lecture, uh, you got to meet me already. I'm Taylor Fabus. I work at Michigan State University Extension. I'm the coordinator of the state level 4-H horse programs. Um, you learned a little bit about me and my family and I wanted to introduce myself again, but I wanted to put a spin on it. So um, this is a new picture and I wanna introduce you to one of the handsomest fellows in my life and that is Ozzy who is standing next to me in that picture there. Let's learn a little more about Ozzy. Um, back in our day, a couple of years ago, we did actually know what we were doing and we could show together. We showed um, all around classes at some Michigan circuits and here we are. Um, this was a few years ago, not too long though. Uh, probably my favorite thing about Ozzy is that he will take care of my kiddos. Now Ozzy is 27 years old. This video or this picture is probably three years old. Um, and now he's 27 and he is just being retired on my farm. He's living in the backyard right now. But there's Ozzy and you guys are actually going to get to meet him later um, in a video. So let's get right to the topic about basic bits and bridle fitting. Um, in general, there are three types of bits that we will go over today, and these three encompass pretty much all the kinds of bits um, that you will see. First is a snaffle, then we're going to talk about curb bits, and then we're going to go over combination bits. Uh, first things first, let's talk about a snaffle. It is the most basic type of bit. It's typically what you're going to start a young horse in, um, although horses of any age can use snaffles. Um, this is a direct pressure bit. So what that means is if I pull with 10 pounds of pressure on my left hand, that horse is going to feel 10 pounds of pressure um, at the corner of their mouth. Uh, so there's no uh, increase in that amount of pressure. We'll see a change in that in a minute on a different kind of bit. Um, the snaffle bits put pressure on the corners of the mouth, which you can see here circled in orange, basically where the lips meet, um, on the tongue, which you all know where that is, and then on the bars of a horse's mouth. If you aren't sure what the bars are, let me show you here on this skeleton. So the bar is where there are no teeth um, in a horse of any age. They uh, have molars back here and incisors up in the front. Um, but this bar area is a very narrow, sometimes even sharp bone. Um, so it's quite delicate. Um, so if bits are fitted or used inappropriately, you can cause damage um, to those bars. And so that we'll talk about how to fit a bridle to a horse in a little bit. Um, 
The snaffle is typically, you are going to expect it to be broken, meaning that there is a jointed area in the mouthpiece, but that is not always the case. Probably one of my, uh, the most common misconceptions that I see is that anybody that thinks a bit has a jointed area, it means it's a snaffle. Um, and that is not the truth. Uh, what comes to mind is a tom thumb and a tom thumb is a curb bit, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but you can see this loose O ring right here. That means that O will spin around. Um, you, there's a few other ways to describe this bit. It is a three piece, meaning you can see it's jointed in two areas. It looks like it's wrapped in rubber. Um, this can also be called a French link. Uh, sometimes I've even heard them referred to as a dog bone. Um, there's a lot of generic terms or terms that you might hear in different parts of the country. Um, so I don't know all of those different terms. So I typically just describe a bit by what it is. So this is a loose O-ring. Um, it's rubber wrapped and it's a three piece. So there will be little confusion if you describe what you see there. Um, the three pieces typically provide a little bit more tongue relief, but it's gonna work on all the same areas. A chain mouthpiece is gonna have multiple jointed areas and, or it can really closely actually resemble a chain. Um, and then a solid is, um, or also, also called a mullen mouth, um, there will be no joints in that. And that's gonna put more pressure across the tongue um, where a three piece will provide more relief. Let's look at some more. Um, information on snaffles. So um, what is the number one determinant of severity of any bit? Drum roll, it is the rider's hands, okay? So the rider's hands are definitely the thing that most determines the severity of a bit. Um, that, with that being said, I have seen some of the most severe or harshest bits um, used very gently in very educated hands and work really well. I've seen some of the mildest bits used inappropriately um, and can be too harsh on a horse. So some things that come to mind is if you have a lesson horse and a newbie rider, you're not gonna put a harsh bit in that person in that horse's mouth um, attached to a newbie's hands because they just aren't educated enough. Um, they might bounce on the horse's mouth and, and that's just not fair to the horse. So um, keep this in mind, um, but we're gonna talk about some other things that determine severity. First is the diameter of the mouthpiece. So essentially how big around this part is. Um, the narrower that is, actually the harsher the bit because this, that same amount of pressure is applied over a smaller surface area so it'll actually feel sharper. A good way to think about this if you're kind of like, wait, what's that mean? Think about a knife. You have the back edge that won't cut anything and then you have the cutting edge that is really, really narrow and it can slice through a lot of things. Same concept with the bit. Um, so the smaller the diameter, the more severe. Now we're also gonna talk about style, type, texture of mouthpiece. So this one that we see here is smooth, um, but it could also be twisted. It could be in a corkscrew fashion, which looks just like what it sounds. Uh, all sorts of varieties there. And here you go. Um, one thing that a takeaway from today is that there are so many types of bits in the world. So we have our basic types, our snaffle, and then we'll get to the others, but then the sky is the limit between there. Um, so it's important to figure out what works for your horse and just really kind of explore different types of bits. We'll talk about some that we see here. I see a half cheek snaffle, it's half because there's only this metal piece that will go point downward um, when it's in the horse's mouth. And then we're gonna move right next to it. That's a full cheek snaffle. You may notice some differences in these mouthpieces. So this mouthpiece first is twisted. Um, if it has a twist, and it's the same diameter as a smooth, the twist is going to be more harsh. Um, and it's that same principle of diameter and surface area, um, and pressure and surface area, excuse me. Um, another thing to know about this full cheek snaffle is that it has a copper mouthpiece. Now copper is going to encourage salvation. So I get, it's hard for me to say, but basically they're going to make more saliva. Um, and that is a good thing. So we want horses that have um, wet mouth. A wet mouth is a happier mouth with a bit in it. You don't want dry ones necessarily, okay? Um, then we have over here, we have a D-ring. You can imagine why it's called a D-ring here. Um, and you can see that it is fixed, although this would swivel. It's not a loose O-ring like over here. See how that bit? 
um, this mouthpiece could just slide all around if it wanted to. Um, this has some copper rollers in it. We have one down here wrapped in rubber, um, a D-ring as well. Uh, here we have an O-ring with a mullen mouth, meaning there are no breaks in that. So just, just some differences. One thing I really want to mention here is that if you are showing, it is super crucial that you review the rule book for whatever organization um, you are showing in to be sure that you are within the guidelines um, for the bit that you selected to show in. The second type of bit that we'll talk about today are curb bits. Uh, and we have in addition to some direct pressure, we're actually having leverage the, on this because of this shank here. I'll circle that in orange. Um, and we're going to talk about those shanks in more detail in a bit, but um, that's how you know it is a curb bit. So the areas that a curb bit applies pressure to are going to be similar areas to the snaffle, but we're gonna add some more. So first it's gonna be the pole. So that's a new place. That's right between the ears on the top of the horse's head. Um, the chin groove, and that's gonna be applied by that chin strap that you can see there that's attached um, to the bit here. That's going to apply some pressure. The corners of the mouth again, the bars, and the roof of the mouth if it has a port, which we'll talk about in a second. So what's gonna affect severity? Number one, we already know is the rider's hands. Also diameter of mouthpiece, style, texture, going to affect it as well, similarly to a snaffle. Um, but we're gonna add in shank length. So the longer the shank, the more leverage. So the harsher the bit, okay? Additionally, some curb bits will have a port in them, uh, which is kind of like a hump in the center of the mouthpiece. So the higher that is um, and the less tongue relief that has, the harsher it is. We'll have some examples in the next slide. Here you go. Um, so I want to talk about a few of these bits. So you can see over here in the top right hand corner, we have a mullen mouth um, with a shank. We have as you can see, this shank over here on the silver one is much longer than our middle one in the top row. The middle one in the top row is also wrapped in copper wire. Um, it's not a sharp wire. It is just to um, increase saliva production. Um, and some horses really like that. Uh, this does have a port in it, the middle top row. Um, the straighter the shank, also the more severe it is. And when I say straighter, I'm talking about the angle created from here down to here, okay? Not talking about the curly cues on this decorative bit that we see uh, first in the top row. Um, typically it's just a decorative um, design that has those curls, but I actually, I had a bit when I was younger, I had a horse that liked to try to put the shank in its mouth, whether it was a sign of aggression or anxiety or what have you, you can decide, but he would love to play by getting the bit in his mouth. Um, and we had a curved or a Z shape here shank and it made it really difficult. And so he stopped playing with the bit so much. So that worked well for us. I wanna go back a second here. Um, I'm actually gonna go, if you don't mind everybody, back to this one. Um, I wanted to talk to you about what are the parts of this bit? So we have the mouthpiece, the shank. This is where this circle here is where the head stall is going to attach. So that's the part that holds this whole thing on the horse's um, head. Right behind that, that little slotted piece, they don't always have a separate slotted piece. Sometimes it's just the circle here, but this is where the chin strap would be attached or the curb chain. Um, and then down here is where the um, reins would attach. So in a curb bit, there is a single area where the reins are attached and you noticed in a snaffle bit, they're attached in a bigger, looser area. Okay, so let's talk about the third type of bit and that is a combination bit. So a combination bit can actually act as a snaffle or a curb depending on where you attach those reins. Um, so here we have on the left, excuse me, we have a Kimberwick bit. Um, you're going to attach the head stall here to this part, the chain to here, um, and then you have two spots where you can attach the reins or you could just leave it loose, um, loosely attached there in the D-ring. The further down you attach those reins, the more leverage you get because that shank gets a little longer. Um, 
something to keep in mind. Over here, this is kind of an interesting bit and it's called a pelum. A pelum bit, this is a pelum with a, a mullen mouth here um, and it's copper, but a pelum will actually have two sets of reins. So you're gonna have a set of reins that's attached here, this larger O as a snaffle rein. And then you're gonna have a, another uh, curb rein down here attached at the bottom of the shank. So if any of you show saddle seat, um, those horses are often shown in what's called a full bridle that would actually have two bits in the horse's mouth. Um, they're smaller and ergonomically designed so that they fit well in a horse's mouth. Um, but one is a snaffle and one is a curb bit. Um, and so you might see something, uh, you might see a saddle seat person showing in something like that. Um, severity, very similar. It's gonna be the mouth, mouthpiece diameter, texture, shank length, um, whether it's curved or straight, um, as well as the port height. So all the same things in the bits that we've talked about before. Bit sizes and materials. Um, so most, most mouthpieces are four and a half to five inches wide. We're talking about the width of the horse's mouth itself. As you can imagine, an Arabian is gonna have a much smaller mouth typically than say a draft horse. Um, and they would likely even have a smaller mouth than a quarter horse or something. Um, I have a couple quarter horses and they have different size mouth. Is, mouth. So um, you can see differences between breed as well. So make sure when you are fitting a bit to your horse, that you make sure it's not pinching them, that it's too narrow, or that it's so wide that it's hanging out either side of the mouth. Neither of those are desirable or ideal. Um, the shank length is typically three to five and a half inches long. Each show organization will have um, recommendations or requirements on how long it can be um, to keep things a uh, level playing field. Um, metals that the bits are made with are most commonly you will see the stainless steel because it's fairly cheap, really durable, but there's little taste, which would likely lead to a dry mouth. Um, you might also see copper, which we've seen and sweet iron. The only problem with sweet iron is that it can rust with time. Um, the other type that we wanna mention is not a bit, but it is a hackamore. So nothing actually goes in the horse's mouth. Um, but instead it goes around the horse's jaw um, or excuse me, around their uh, muzzle. You have mechanical hackamores that we see here on the left and um, you have bozelles over here. This is a rawhide bozelle. Okay. You may think right off the bat that, oh, these aren't going in the horse's mouth. So they are milder, um, but that's not always the case. Um, so just like the bits, it really just depends on how they are used. Um, over here, we have a Bozelle and up here as well. This one looks like it's a, on the top is a hard rubber composite product. And then down here, we have a very narrow rawhide. Um, the width of those are also determined by show organizations and they can't be too narrow. Um, here we have two mechanical hackamores. This one's really similar to the last slide. This one in the middle, however, has a leather chin strap and sheepskin covering the nose piece. So it's likely to be milder um, than one that has a chain chin strap and is not protected there. Does not mean that this one is too harsh or too um, severe, it's just more severe than this one over here. Okay, so it just depends on what the horse needs. Um, all right, we're getting close to the end here. I hope that you've learned something about bit and bridle fit. Um, you are more than welcome and encouraged to look up these articles on the topic if you're wanting a little more information. We have this one that I wrote um, about understanding bits and bridles, and it's going to reiterate a lot of the topics we went over. And then this one, which features my handsome fella, Ozzy, you may recognize from a few slides ago. So this is about proper fitting of a bridle. So you can visit that. And then what I would definitely suggest that you do is check out Michigan 4-H Horse Program's Facebook page and um, search, we have this bit and bridle fit um, video. It's about 12 minutes long, but I think it's pretty interesting. Um, so I'd highly recommend you checking that out. Um, I put a bridle and different types of bits in three different horses um, and show some common misconceptions, some common errors that I see. Um, 
as a judge throughout our state. And I see it commonly at shows and just misconceptions about how they should be utilized. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. And I can make sure that in the caption that these links are included so that you guys can easily find them. Um, but wait, there's more. So if you guys have find yourself recently searching for some online education, you just need to get your hands on um, and keep yourself busy while at home. Um, extensionhorses.org has created a huge, we've made a bunch of our best products um, and equine courses completely free. Um, you just click this link, which again, I will provide in the description of this video so you can easily click it. Um, make a free login and you will have these topics over on the left and several more and we keep adding as we can. So I would suggest checking those resources out. And if you liked this, keep an eye out on Friday, March 18th on the same YouTube channel or on the Michigan 4-H Horse Program Facebook page. Uh, we are going to do more Lunch and Learn um, lectures. On Friday at noon, it's going to be about horse health and vital signs. We'll get to watch some videos as well. Um, I think you guys will really like that one. And drum roll, we're going to do it again. So um, I have the next two weeks of lectures planned out. I'm really excited that we have some guest lecturers joining. So you guys don't just have to tell don't just have to listen to me each time. Um, on Monday, March 23rd, you are going to hear from Melissa Ellisher about the domestication of livestock. Um, the 25th, we'll hear about biosecurity at the horse show with Katie Oker. And on 27th, it'll be back with me. I'm going to teach you how to judge Hunter Under Saddle and Hunter Pleasure. All right. So I hope that you guys all enjoyed that. And um, we will keep this on this YouTube channel so that you can rewatch if you um, wanted to learn more. I will add all of those links as hyperlinks in um, the description of this video, but I hope you learned some things and I hope that we will see you on our next uh, Lunch and Learn lecture. So thanks guys.